Hi, in this video we will be demonstrating how to use the STM32WB nuclear board with the Clarinox Bluestack and BLE application. But first, a brief overview of what we do here at Clarinox. Here at Clarinox, we specialize in the development and integration of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technologies into embedded systems. We offer the most fully featured software stack on the market supporting almost every Wi-Fi and Bluetooth protocol, from mesh networking to having multiple connected devices all in different profiles and roles all simultaneously. This is all packaged into the Clarinox SoftFrame middleware which allows for portable, maintainable and easy integration of Clarinox products into all popular embedded operating systems, such as FreeRTOS, ThreadX, Integrity, VxWorks, QNX, Android and many more. The STM32WB Nucleo board is a dual-core wireless microcontroller containing an ARM Cortex-M4 for application processing, as well as an ARM Cortex-M0 network coprocessor. For the purpose of this demonstration, the Clarinox Blue software stack has been integrated with the existing HCI firmware to showcase the portability, user-friendliness and flexibility when coupled with ST Microelectronics powerful hardware. In this demonstration, we will be configuring our nuclear board to run as a Bluetooth low energy peripheral and central device. We will also be using a smartphone to operate in the reverse role for each configuration. In peripheral mode, we will be advertising, reading service characteristics, modifying our local characteristics from the nuclear board, and rereading the modified values on our client device. Similarly, we will run our nuclear board as a central device so that we can read and write the remote characteristics of our peripheral smartphone device. During this demonstration, we will be using the Clarinox Clarify debugger to interface with the nuclear board via UART debugging. This will provide us with a terminal console interface to communicate with the nuclear board, as well as allowing us to monitor the BLE HCI commands and events and ACL data packets. Let's begin with our first configuration in which we have our Nucleo board configured as a BLE peripheral device and our smartphone configured as a central device. The first thing we'll need to do is initialize the Clarinox Blue stack on our Nucleo board and begin advertising so that we can discover the device with our phone. Now that we can see the device, let's connect to it. We can see in our Clarify debugger that we have successfully established a connection between the two devices and that we are now reporting our GAT services and characteristics to the central device. Once the Nucleo has finished reporting, we can discover the five services that it supports, the two mandatory GAT services, as well as the custom, battery and device information services. Let's read from our battery level characteristic. Here, we see that the value is zero. Let's change this from our Nucleo peripheral device by writing local characteristics, selecting the battery service we wish to write to, and choosing the characteristic handle that corresponds to the battery level. After successfully writing a hex value of A, we can reread the characteristic from our central device with the updated value. If we look at the device information service, we can see that it has a read-only property, so we cannot change its value from the central device. Let's take a moment now to look at one of the messages in our Clarinox Blue monitor window. We'll use the read request that was just sent to our Nucleo peripheral device as an example. When we click on this message, we can see in our message details panel that this message was a read request from our smartphone central device, requesting the manufacturer name string. In this message, we are also able to view information regarding packet size, transmission direction, and the Bluetooth protocol being used. If we look at the next message sent in this exchange, we can see in our message details panel that this is a read response and that it carries the manufacturer name string, Clarinox. Following the same steps as before, we can write to the manufacturer name after selecting the device information service and the handle index for the characteristic. Now we can reread this characteristic from our central device to see that it's changed. The last service we'll modify is a custom GAT service running on our peripheral device. As before, we can modify characteristics of this service from our Nucleo peripheral device and then read from our central device. With the second characteristic in this service, we can read and write in both directions, as specified by the write property for this characteristic. When we write a new value from the central device, 
we can see in the terminal window that the nuclear peripheral has been notified of this change. As always, all the exchanges between these two devices are captured by our Clarify debugger to provide detailed data packet information. In the next part of this demonstration, we will be swapping roles so that our nuclear board will be configured in a central role and our smartphone will be configured in a peripheral role. For our smartphone peripheral device, we've created our own custom server with battery service, device information service, and custom GAT service. Before we do anything else, we'll need to initialize our Clarinox Blue stack. Since our peripheral device is already advertising, let's go ahead and start scanning for this device. Now that we've found all the nearby devices, let's connect to the one labeled Custom. And we are now successfully connected. The first thing we'll do from our Nucleo central device is discover all of the primary services that are running on our smartphone peripheral. We can see the two mandatory GAT services and the three additional custom services that we've made. We will look at the first custom service by entering the service index 2. Although we can't see the name of the characteristic in this service, we can see that its universal unique identifier matches to that of the battery level in our phone app. Let's read this attribute by entering in the handle value, index of where we want to read from, and the size we would like to read. We can see that we have read the same value that we see from our peripheral smartphone device. We are also able to set up notifications on our nuclear device to be notified when this value is changed by the peripheral device. And, since this characteristic also contains the right property, we are able to modify its value from our central device. Let's switch to the device service now. As in the last configuration, we can see that the manufacturer characteristic is a read-only characteristic. We'll read this value by entering in the handle value, the index at which we wish to start reading from, and the size of the characteristic value. Finally, we will look at our custom GAT service that contains the RX and TX data characteristics. As with our previous examples, the RX data characteristic contains the read and notify properties. We are able to read the following value from our Nucleo central device and set up notifications so that we are told when the peripheral device modifies this value. Unlike the RX data characteristic, the TX data characteristic contains the write property, which allows us to write information back to our smartphone peripheral device. Once again, we can use write attribute value to modify this value from our central device and observe the changes on our peripheral device. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on Clarinox products or if you have any inquiries, please visit our website.